Honestly, I think with this kind of stuff, especially in the nutrition coaching space, if you just give a shit about people, mm. it will show and you'll be successful. If you, it's very clear people who are in it for the money. Mm-hmm. And I know people who are and who've like openly told me that. And there's a reason that their business only does well for a short period of time. Welcome to another episode of the Health Coach Academy podcast. I'm your host, Omar Cumberbatch of omarcumberbatch.com. As always, appreciate you jumping in, taking a listen to all the good and new in the health coach space. And today we have an awesome guest. Her name is Stephanie Fuznik. And we really just got along great. I mean, she was fantastic at really just dropping a lot of dimes about just how important it is for health coaches out there to just be genuine and authentic and how that is really like the driving part of her business that she's getting, you know, such a wonderful clientele to the point that she has a waiting list and she really is just embracing this business journey so very excited to share stephanie with you speaking of these business journeys i haven't asked uh, I, I am actually looking for a few people to hit me up at omar at omarcumberbatch.com when you get a moment i am trying to set up something where i'm doing a little bit of market research right so a couple of buddies of mine are putting together something about health coaching businesses and we're trying to figure out a couple of key points that we think that we can hopefully serve the health coaching community better so if you are open to that please give me a quick email at omar at omarcumberbatch.com and then we can really just pick your brain for maybe 10 15 minutes because I have an exciting thing that we're going to be rolling out most likely right when the summer starts to kick off. And yeah, we just, again, it's a market researching kind of thing, really just trying to find out some of the concerns and things that we can support the health coaching community a little bit better with and really excited about it. So I think that you're going to really enjoy our conversation um, and basically get us with some real real interesting feedback so i'm excited about that one more note of housekeeping please leave a rating and review on itunes that does me wonders so that such to the point that i keep getting wonderful guests like stephanie on the show so let's jump into it hey stephanie how are you today welcome to the show good how are you thank you for having me on Oh, fantastic. I always love learning from entrepreneurs in the middle of all the craziness doing their thing. So you have a great story. We've had uh, you know some conversations off air, so I definitely want to pick your brain and share you with the audience because we were all in the same boat at one point. And I'm sure you could give us some insight on like a little bit about how you were able to you know successfully build your business. So one of the things I want to just give you an opportunity is to just tell your origin story, a little bit about yourself so that audience gets to know you a little bit better. Yeah, for sure. So for me, my story is a little bit long. Um, I never thought this is what I'd be doing, actually. Um, I was always into health and fitness. I thought I was going to be a phys ed teacher. Um, I actually went into university to do the kin ed program and uh, got into coaching and realized I probably didn't want to work with teenagers for the rest of my life (laughs) and not my demographic for sure. Um, and through that, I also, in my kin degree, got my personal training certification. So I started personal training, loved that, but I hated working with athletes, like hated it to me. It wasn't very fulfilling. I was hmm. like, uh, eh, you could jump a little, a little higher. Oh, we like got your aerobic system working a bit better, man. Mm-hmm. Like for me, it just wasn't, wasn't what I was passionate about. And then I started seeing a lot more individuals with chronic conditions and absolutely fell in love. Um, I was working with people who had had heart attacks, osteoporosis, cancer, arthritis, um, COPD, like you name it, any kind of rehabby type thing, diabetes, you name it. I just, I loved it. And it was great because I didn't have to fight people for them because no one wanted to work with them. They wanted to work with athletes. And I was like, perfect. This is, this is a perfect <laughs> opportunity for me. So then I got my exercise therapy certification, did my master's, again, really focused on more chronic disease type stuff. Then I ended up working for the health region where in my area, I, I was managing the chronic disease exercise management programs. Loved that, but always felt like there was something kind of kind of missing. Um, wasn't able to help people in the capacity that I wanted. And there's the politics of the healthcare system and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, okay, hey, this, 
I don't feel like this system is working. I feel like we're not helping people the way we should be helping people. Mm -hmm. um, and then COVID hit and I was like, okay, this is for sure not all I want to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, so then I got my manual osteopathic therapy certification. I'd always done nutrition kind of on the side as a hobby, um, but it was never something I really, really focused on. And then through um, osteopathy, I opened my own clinic. I had massage therapists working for me. I had a studio. Um, absolutely loved it. But again, I just felt like there was something, something missing. Like I feel like with osteo, I got a little bit closer to helping people's root causes, but you'd hear stories about like wanting to lose weight and they're exercising. It's not really working. And then I started working with clients who were 250, 300 pounds, really trying to lose weight. And they're eating like a thousand calories. And I was like, okay, what is going on here? Like this doesn't make sense. The whole calories in calories out like this something's not right. How are we defining these so-called laws? Right. And right. they would show me their food logs and what they're doing. I'm like, Hey, something's going on. So I did some more certifications, did some more deep diving into metabolism and really started understanding where the healthcare system was going wrong in a lot of things. Um, but then I started working with menopausal and perimenopausal women and the rules applied, but it was just different. Something was missing and off and the advice they were getting just didn't seem to work as well as it did with my male clients or my younger clients. So started deep diving into that. And that's really where I started focusing all my energy. Um, I saw a huge need because I mean, the average woman diets two times a year at least. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it's crazy what we do to our bodies and no one, no one tells you what things do to your hormones and is there things that are supposed to be different during perimenopause and menopause and How's your body changed? Or why did things that used to work don't work anymore? So that's really where I niched down and really where I focused all my energy. Um, and I absolutely love it. And now I have a, an online company. I have 10 staff working for me. Um, we're helping women all over the world from US, Canada, Australia, Norway, the UK. Um, it's been pretty incredible and like amazing to finally feel like I'm having the impact that I've always wanted because mm -hmm. there was always just something missing with like in-person one-to-one -one that I was like, this just isn't, it's not enough is how I felt. So now I'm, I'm doing the things, but I never, I never thought this is the route that I would go and where I would end up, but I'm grateful that I am. Yeah, no, well, that wasn't that long of a story. So <laughs> no, I don't feel bad about that. That was actually pretty, pretty concise. And one of the things you've touched on a lot of different topics that I'm probably going to go <laughs> back to, because I think one of the big things that health coaches, uh, including myself, that uh, niching down is very hard, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Like, it seems like you kind of stumbled upon it, but what made it you like say, okay, this is where I'm going. I know you know, you're very passionate about it, but was it some of, you know, your own personal experiences or how did that actually come about? And it's like, this is where, this is going to be my lane for the foreseeable future. Yeah. So I've always really taken, um, I've always been very interested in like health advocacy because um, I honestly think our healthcare system does a terrible job. Mm -hmm. I think if you need a surgery or if you need, you know, medications or something, great. I think when it comes to treating chronic, chronic conditions and actually promoting health, I think we do a horrific job and I think it's going to get worse before it gets better, unfortunately, because that's usually mm -hmm. how systems work. Um, so this is something I've always been very passionate about is like being proactive in health, um, and just the stories I would hear from some women, um, when they were coming to work with me was just like, I just couldn't believe it or how they would have all these concerns and they weren't taken seriously. The response was, oh, this is perimenopause. It's just how it is now. Just ride it out for a few years and you'll be fine. Weight gain is inevitable. This is inevitable. Like it was just so not taken seriously, um, or things would get like misdiagnosed because, you know, symptoms of perimenopause are very vast and, um, to me, it just like pissed me off enough that <laughs> I'm a kind yeah. of person that when I get mad, I get pretty, uh, passionate about things. And that's really what led me down it. But I, I would say it chose me more than I chose it. Like I just found that people needed it. And mm -hmm. so I was willing to really dig down and figure out why, cause if I can't figure out why I'm going to keep figuring it out until I, I get there and can help. Um, but I mean, uh, stumbling upon all this stuff and doing the certifications that helped me with my, my hormone journey too. Cause I didn't realize until I started getting into this stuff, how messed up my own hormones were. And I was diagnosed with PCOS and they don't really tell you anything. They're just like, Oh, you have this. And I'm yeah. just, oh, okay, cool. Like what, what does that mean? Long-term should I be afraid? What's going on? Then you start Googling and 
then you're crying because you're it's always a terrible idea is to WebMD anything, right? But yeah. that's what you do. And it helped me a lot. And it made me be able to take a more global approach to to health and realize like you think you're the exception to the rule or you don't think these things are really as bad or you're not that stressed out or you don't have this, you don't have that. And then going through these things, you're like, oh yeah, all these things add up and lead to this. And it's not just a easy fix. And most medications are just going to be a band aid, yeah. um, and they're not solving any root causes. So the problem's still, still happening. So for me, it was more, I stumbled upon it almost and saw that people needed help and I was willing to, to figure it out. <laughs> Yeah, so you did mention something that's interesting too, because we we do have a tendency to over educate ourselves, over certify ourselves, and not do anything. So what was cool about your story, at least, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that when you were in the in the business, though, then you started kind of adding mm -hmm. on and finding out what what was different about you in that respect compared to say other coaches who I'm sure that you've seen mm -hmm. have five thousand certifications and no clients. <laughs> so. Yeah. So I think like a big part of it is like, just because you have the education, if you don't know how to apply it, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I think we have a big issue with like connection and application. This is something, um, Jason Phillips, I did my certifications through him and he's also a business mentor of mine. And he, this is something that really, um, made me like him a lot, like, like the approach they took on it. And it's, it's all about connection. Like, yes, there's apps. Yes, there's all these things. But if you can't build connection with people and if you can't actually apply the knowledge you're accumulating, it doesn't matter. You have to have the reps in. And I mean, I have a lot of reps. Like I've been in the business since 2011. Um, I used to volunteer at hospitals. I did so much volunteering in different programs. I started training quite young. Like I was very curious. And I think if you're not a curious person and don't really try to understand how to apply things properly. It doesn't matter because I mean, I've seen coaches who are brilliant, like so smart. You have a conversation. I'm just like, dang, like, you know, a lot, like I'm a little intimidated, but you don't see them succeeding. And it's because they can't get the information across or really help understand, like get clients to understand how to apply those things. Cause I mean, I help people calculate calories for free in my DMS all the time. Like I have at any given time, there's like 50 messages sitting there mm -hmm. When you can give people all the resources, all the education, all the information. But if you don't know how to apply it, it doesn't matter. That'd be like a surgeon who's spent years studying film and reading all the books, but they haven't performed a surgery. Would you want to have a surgeon who has a little less knowledge, but a ton of practice and a lot of reps in, yeah. or would you want someone who's had no actual practice, but has all the knowledge. So it's like, it's that kind of connection and application issue, I think. And that's why apps and stuff like that will never replace coaching. Like you'll always have a job because people need connection. They need to troubleshoot. Screens aren't enough and COVID showed us that. Yeah, no, absolutely right. Yeah, and then that's the, you know, the accountability portion of it, just the, it, it alone. And then I never valued that, honestly, until pretty recently because I was like, I could do all this stuff on my own and it, it was just a, a, a tough go. So I, I definitely think, like you said, there's going to be a need for coaches forever. It's just one of the things. And one of what I wanted to ask you specifically to, um, were you always good at business? <laughs> I don't know that I would say I was good at business. Um, I would say I was always a good leader. Um, which helps with you becoming good at business um, in a way like, cause if you're a good leader, you can lead a team and you can teach. And I think that's one of my strong suits is being a good teacher. Um, mm. I really think that's like a calling for me. Um, so I get to teach not in schools. I get to teach them more globally, which is awesome. But I had no freaking idea <laughs> what I was doing <laughs> when I started. I mean, I had gotten fired from a gym at my last job. Um, they had gone ethically in a way that I did not agree with. I was very vocal about it, um, morally, like cutting people's hours and not paying them for work and mm. just a total destruction of a great culture we had built. And I defended my coaches and I knew I would get fired and I did the next day. Mm. Um, but it was like, a, okay, this is an opportunity to go all in on myself. I, I'm 
I have to make this work. And I had no freaking idea what I was doing. Um, it's a lot of Googling. It's a lot of just figuring out, but that's how it is with nutrition and fitness too. It's, you don't have the perfect plan or everything outlined perfectly and there's no perfect time. You just start and you figure it out as you go. You, as you get better at it, like it, things will improve. You can reach out to mentors, you can get help, but there is no, like you won't know until you do it you know, and you're going to make mistakes, but like you're, you'll get there eventually. You're not just born good at business. I don't think that's a skill you need to develop. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I'm always curious because again, like, you know, your journey is, is interesting because of a variety of reasons, but would you have done anything different? Like right now, like as far as if you, you know, 10 year ago, you, what would have changed? Honestly, I don't know that I would have changed anything because I really do think that every career, every, I mean, I went from training to exercise therapy to management to having a clinic and osteo and nutrition coaching, like, but I think all of those things really help me understand and appreciate the human body as a whole a lot more Uh realizing you can't isolate things like, okay, there's something wrong with the heart, but the heart influences everything else in the body and everything else influences the heart. Like you can't just isolate things. It doesn't work that way, especially with hormones and nutrition. Mm -hmm. But I mean, same with business, like every, every job that I've had, um, was service-based a hundred percent, um, always working with people. But I think every single thing, it helped me really develop different communication skills with different types of people, whether it be clients and coworkers and people higher up and lower than you, like, I think every, every step I took really helped me become like the business person and leader that I am now. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a long, it was a long road to get here, but I don't think I could have skipped any steps that like, there was nothing that wasn't beneficial, I would say. So yeah, I don't think, honestly, I don't think I would change anything. No, that's a great answer. Uh, it it definitely shows that your your ability to adjust and and actually make it through the the, the terrain of the, the the business world. I guess maybe if I could reframe it in a different way, because the audience I know loves th- that question. Like, what what would you tell us to do? Like, what would we what would it, a skill maybe that you like? Listen, get that down, and then you're on your way. Even with the, honestly, the hiccups. Yeah, the honestly, I think with this kind of stuff, especially in the nutrition coaching space, if you just give a shit about people. Mm -hmm. it will show and you'll be successful. If you, it's very clear people who are in it for the money. Mm -hmm. And I know people who are, and who've like openly told me that. And there's a reason that their business only does well for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. Um, You're like, people will never forget how you make them feel. Mm -hmm. We have people that have been in our program that it's very slow going for them. They have been struggling for a long time. Healing is not easy. Fat loss is not going to come easy but they've been with us for a long time because they feel good. They feel connected. They trust us. They enjoy talking with us. Um, They know they're moving in the right direction, but they know that we care. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that a lot of people forget. And it's like learning how to communicate and show that, especially in the digital realm where it's all virtual, right? It's different than being in person. Yeah. So learning how to communicate, how to write, show your authenticity, be vulnerable, Those kinds of things are something that if you can get that down and be good at sharing that stuff and good at communicating that stuff, you will go so far. Like there's no like specific, tiny, tangible, tangible thing. Um, The other thing too would be like doing some sort of business planning. This is something that I'm pretty big on and I've been teaching more on um, because a lot of people will just like post and pray or they'll... Mm -hmm. You know, just be like, oh, okay, I ran a this promo this time of year. If I run it again next time, this time of year, it'll be great. And then it flops. And it's like, take inventory of like, what are you posting? What's doing well? What warmed up your leads so that your business was doing well and then led to a successful framework or promotion or whatever you're doing? Mm -hmm. What, like, really take inventory of the posts that do well, the conversations that it brings. Like, taking inventory of all those things so you can plan better for the future makes a huge difference. Like I have my plan, my year planned in advance, like a whole mm. year. My content is planned usually a month in advance. Mm. Um, but looking back at past years, you can see what didn't work, what did work, what was leading up to the successful seasons. Like 
being able to write everything down and being able to look back at that is super important. Once I started doing that, it has made my life so much easier, mm. so much less stressful. I know like if I have a good month or a bad month, it's like, I know why, like I know exactly what happened and how to avoid it or how to change it. I know why months were good. I know, like, you know, you can look back and really understand why you receive the outcomes that you did. And I think that's something we don't do because it's boring and gross and <laughs> nobody likes to do that. Right. But right. it has made a huge, huge difference. And it gives me a peace of mind because I know, okay, from these few things, I know I'm going to have sales calls from this. I know from running these three things, we have this much of like a close percentage. So I know I'm going to have probably at least this many sales. Like it's a lot easier to predict stuff if you're looking back. So if you have a nutrition client that like you give their goals to, you would expect them to have a plan, right? Mm -hmm. Like if they're just like hoping they're going to eat and at the end of the day, magically hit their goals, that's like you're giving up a lot to chance. Whereas like, how can you plan to ensure that those things happen? It's the same thing in business. And I don't think a lot of people really put those two things together. Um, a lot of the things that we do with our clients, especially nutrition wise, like it's the same principles for business, but like we don't apply it the same way. Yeah, no, I, I definitely know this. I'm I'm bad at that as well. Like as 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 far as the measurables and taking stock into certain things, uh, you know, I I think it's it's definitely a, a big tip that and I appreciate that you sharing that with us. So, what does your business model actually look like right now? Yeah, so we do predominantly just one to one coaching. Mm -hmm. We have like a four to five week uh, wait list. So we have an onboarding course that we've created for people to do in the meantime. Mm -hmm. um, but it's yeah, one to one coaching. We do nutrition and exercise programming. We do hormone testing if people want to opt into that. Um, we do offer a group coaching option as well. That's a little bit lower ticket, a little less um, support from coaches, like less Zoom calls and check ins and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But still the accountability there. And then we do like the odd challenge or webinar or workshop and stuff like that as well. But our like our bread and butter is is one to one coaching. OK, no, that's interesting, because, <laughs> again, everybody has like a different method and approach uh, to try to get to get their businesses going off the ground. So what mm -hmm. have you felt is like your best marketing strategy at this point to get clients? I mean, I think from if, if I hear my audience correctly, it's about getting the clients, right? And you're a perfect mm -hmm. example of someone who's, you know, doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. So you need to keep getting people into that, into that funnel so that you can get the business. So what, what, what does that method look like? And, you know, any tips on that? Yeah. So, well, before even going into that, I would say work on client retention first, um, mm -hmm. that we don't have to get as many new people into your program. Mm -hmm. Um, like we're at 40, like we can only take 40 more people into our client, into our program and then we're done. Um, then we'll mm -hmm. have a longer wait list. Like, because our clients are staying longer, which is awesome. Um, but in terms of marketing, like we, we just, the way I, pro I really approach it is what can the person learn from what I'm posting? Is there value? What resources can I give them? Like with our marketing, like usually it'll be like themed, like we'll talk about different hormones sometimes or things like that. But I give away literally everything for free. So like if you wanted to, you could probably get access to the majority of our resources just by like commenting for stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And then like you would be able to do it on your own. But if people would do it on their own, they would have done it by now. Right. So people do need the accountability and the support and someone to kind of help them through it. Mm -hmm. But it's really just all about providing value. So it's giving away so much stuff. We do webinars every week in our Facebook group. Um, the podcast also provides a ton of free information, but all of my, all of my content is giving something away, educating about hormones, learning how to apply stuff. Like every time you read something, like you should be able to learn something or apply something. That's really how I go about it. Um, I'm the kind of person that provides a ton of education. I just like being a teacher. So my captions will be quite long with information and stuff too. Um, cause I think people are just sick of doing stuff to do stuff without actually understanding. Um, mm. it doesn't last to change. So I think we're in a, in a place right now where a lot of people really want to understand how their body works and why things work or don't work and then how to actually fix that. So like for us, it's just, we apply a lot of value. Like mm -hmm. we're not just going to post random things to post things. Sometimes we'll do the odd recipe here and there, like, I don't do like, you know, thirst trap type stuff for that's not, that's not who I am. And that's not 
like just because you have a good looking body doesn't mean you have the education to back it or that you can be a good coach. And I think people are starting to care a lot more about like that kind of stuff. Right. right. Um, and you can see the trend changing a lot. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I do notice that as well, for sure. So you're, you're basically on all the platforms or is it uh, something that specifically you lean into because of the type of client that you're looking for? Yeah. So I, I'm on TikTok, I'm on Instagram and I'm on Facebook. Um, those are like my three main platforms and I have YouTube just for the podcast as well. We put a, mm -hmm. a, a visual version of that on there. Um, but I mean, on Instagram, I only have like 7,000 followers. Mm -hmm. TikTok, I think I've got like 80K. Um, Facebook, I've got 55K who follow me. I have a Facebook community as well, which has about 19,000 people now. Um, so Facebook is definitely where my clientele lives, but you post everywhere, you know? Mm -hmm. Um but for me, the podcast has been very instrumental in, in the growth of the company. Um, it's a lot easier to learn that way. Usually when people are listening to a podcast, they're more focused on it. And it's easier to binge listen to, to a podcast and like really learn things and understand the person and get to know them um, mm -hmm. and understand your brand and who you are, your authenticity. Whereas like Instagram and stuff, it's easy just like, oh, like something, move on, scroll, like something, move on. You don't actually like absorb the content as much. Right. Um, and since in my in my demographic and the people I work with, they're very keen to learn, the long form content is significantly better for us. But everyone will be a little bit different depending on where your clientele lives, what they do, mm -hmm. and the kind of content they like to consume. Oh, I love it. And those are not uh, pedestrian numbers by any stretch. Those are good numbers. So it just shows you. that you are d doing your thing. So you you deliver just like you're delivering on the outside. So I want to make sure that I give you an opportunity to just share with the audience at this point, you know, how to get in touch with you, those social media handles that you did mention, and then anything that we could uh, just keep abreast of what's what's new in your in your world. So we would really love to hear that at this stage. Yeah, for sure. So we have the podcast called the Metabolism and Menopause Podcast um, on TikTok and on Instagram. I'm Vitality OET dot Stephanie because our company is called Vitality OET. Um, and then on Facebook, it's just Stephanie Fusnick. Okay, awesome. Well, Steph, you've been fantastic. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I just can't wait to share this episode with the audience. So have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed listening to today's episode of the Health Coach Academy podcast. If you did, jump over to iTunes and leave a rating and or review. It goes a long way in helping get this message out to our fellow health coaches and people in our industry. Also, if you can, jump over to my website, omarcumberbatch.com, where I give out a lot of freebies, including my five-day sugar challenge for people who are having issues with sugar. And also for health coaches, I have the book, Hidden. It's the six not-so-obvious ways to get your clients unstuck. Have a great day.